Good morning. We have just started our hike down the Pinkerton Creek Trail, where we will be ending at Lake Superior. And if all goes well with the first part of the hike, we're going to push on a little bit further and go see the mouth of the Big Carp River. Which is hopefully only a mile or so from the mouth of the Little Carp River where we should be ending. So total round trip should be somewhere between 8 and 10 miles, given, you know, our typical pace and meandering and wandering. It's eight miles on the map, <laughs> 10 miles for the trekkers. That sounds about right. <laughs> so anyways, excited to take you along with us to see what we can see today and um, see you at Lake Superior. This is Pinkerton Creek. It's got to be Pinkerton Creek. I could look at the map, I suppose, but let's just call it Pinkerton Creek. This is really cool. Spend a little time in the Porcupine Mountains and you will discover how tenacious and stubborn trees can be, especially if they're along a body of water. We are here along what we think is Pinkerton Creek on the Pinkerton Creek Trail. And this tree has dug in its roots into the soil as best it can and has actually grown over a boulder into the water trying to get what it needs to keep going. And it's going strong. So good job, tree. We found the river. We did. This is the Little Carp River. And this is apparently an overlook of the Little Carp River and we are headed to the mouth of the Little Carp River. We found the Little Carp River. If you look that way, you can see Lake Superior. Some nice views for folks who are doing some backcountry camping. Yeah, for those lucky enough to grab one of these spots, this would be a great place to wake up to in the morning. Now, I suppose, granted, that there's not some big storm, but even then, that might just be some really cool views. Oh, I see. You can just swing your leg right over the log. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You're the one with short people problems. <laughs> okay. I suppose we should say for context, the first time I went over that log, I totally fell off and had to do it again. So he's just being a show off. If you want to do some backcountry hiking, but camping, sleeping on the ground, 
in a tent, whatever, isn't for you, and you'd rather be in a building, they do have some cabins here at the Porky's that are pretty cool. This is one of the cabins here behind me that is right on Lake Superior, so you could have some awesome views and go sleep under a roof at night. <laughs> Behind us is the mouth of the Big Carp River as it empties into Lake Superior. So we made our second destination. <laughs> we did, we made it. And it was actually relatively easy. It's really muddy. And especially since it, we did have some rain the last couple of days, but I think down here, it's always going to be wet because you are near Lake Superior. But it's a relatively flat trail, uh, given some of the other places in the park that we have been. Not any major elevation changes, but just a lot of roots and mud uh, to deal with. So just to recap so everybody understands, we started on the Pinkerton Creek Trail, took that, saw Pinkerton Creek, and then the mouth of the Little Carp River, and decided we felt pretty good, so we'd push on and we went on to the mouth of the Big Carp River, and that actually is you go from um, Pinkerton Creek Trail and you actually end up on Lake Superior Trail. Yes. So just for reference so people understand, you come down Lake Superior Trail, there were a a good, what, half dozen backcountry campsites on the Lake Superior Trail, too. So those are really nice sites there. There's some cabins out here. This is really pretty. And for reference, it's about four and a quarter, four, four and a quarter miles, depending on if you do some of the little jaunts out to see the views and the vistas. Um, and, you know, it took us two hours, 45 minutes. But that's because, again, we stopped to shoot all this amazing video for you guys. So. You know, obviously, hopefully it would take you a little bit less time and it should take us less on the way back. But just for context, it is really pretty out here, but it is muddy. So make sure you have um, shoes that you don't mind getting a little muddy and wet. <laughs> and it's about lunchtime and I think this would be a great picnic spot. <laughs> Well, as we said, we made it to the mouth of the Big Carp, where we stopped and had an enjoyable lunch. And then at the recommendation of some fellow uh, hikers that we met along the way, they suggested we make a short jaunt up the Big Carp River Trail to see a couple of waterfalls. And they said it's only, you know, a mile and a half there for a three mile round trip. So we said, why not? It's a gorgeous day. We're making good time and we're out here and we decided we might not necessarily be back on this section of the trail again. So while we're out here, we're going to go and see those. So we're at the split where Lake Superior Trail and Big Carp River Trail come together. And according to one of the signs, it's about a yeah, mile and a quarter to Shining Cloud Falls, I think is one of the big ones that we're going to see. And when else are you going to be just about a mile away from something like that? So <laughs> miles will take advantage of it. We've started to hit some of the backcountry campsites on the Big Carp River Trail. And Again, they don't disappoint. You're right along the Big Carp River. Nice peaceful view. Sound of the river. Seems like a good place to try to fall asleep at night and to wake up to in the morning. Hey. We made it all the way to Big Carp Campsite 7. It's one of the backcountry campsites, and it's one another one of the hikers and campers told us about to head out to. It's kind of our end point for today. 
and they suggested coming down here because right along the river, it's all hollowed out here and the rock formations are pretty cool. So if you were to get an opportunity to camp at this one, it'd be kind of fun to be out here and take some time to meander around on the riverbank and check out the rock formations just to see what's here. Down the river behind us is Shining Cloud Falls. And we're gonna see if we can get a better view of it. When you're up on the trail, they're kind of down below you and you can hear them and you can kind of see them, but it's not quite the access we thought it was gonna be. But just being at this campsite is pretty cool and getting to see what mother nature has carved out over the years. So that's actually Shining Cloud Falls down there through the trees, it's a little obscured. And the eyes can see it better than the cameras can because you're up quite a ways on the trail above the falls, but I'll try to point to them. That's the big falls coming over there. They start up back in here. And I'm sure different times of the year, they're gonna be running a lot faster. It's pretty, I wish we could get closer to them for you, but after today's hike and we're only halfway, that's not a climb I'm willing to make. <laughs> we're making good progress. I'm working on it. We are at the end of a little snack break here. We are about to enter the Pinkerton Creek Trail headed back to where the road trek is parked, back to the trailhead. Um, and that's not bad, it's three miles. Relatively flat, little muddy, but relatively flat. Much easier than what we found as we kept going. So as you've seen, as you've gone along with this, we added a little bit of mileage to go see the mouth of the Big Carp River. That wasn't bad. No. The Lake Superior Trail, a little muddy, not bad. Now we decided to add a few miles to go see Shining Cloud Falls and, and some of the- And Bathtub Falls. And Bathtub Falls <laughs> and some of the really nice um, backcountry campsites that are out there. That was harder than we thought it was gonna be. That puts you on the Big Carp River Trail. And if you remember or saw the video that we did from the other day on our big mirror lake correction though that part of that was on the big carp river trail as well and it that one goes all through the park so it is considered one of the more challenging hikes and as we reminded ourselves of that today instead of where like lake superior it's relatively flat and you're going right along the coast um big carp starts going back up and and, and you end up back up over the rock uh, river overlooking it so it's quite a bit of elevation quite a lot of roots uphill both ways down and downhill. I can't even talk straight at this point. It, it is it is uphill <laughs> in both directions. And, and that is because we, we didn't continue down the trail to do any kind of a loop. I mean, we're doing an in and out. And we've mentioned that in other videos, you could do an in and out kind of thing. But then that means, you know, as you're walking along and you're going down a big hill and being <laughs> careful so you don't fall, you got to remember coming back, you're going up that hill. <laughs> it, was, it was well worth it. I'm glad we did it because when we looked at the map and said, well, would we come this way again? Um, probably not just because in order to get to those waterfalls from the Big Carp River Trail, you'd have to basically repeat what a lot of what we did on our other video um, or from our other hike. I mean, where you're starting at Lake of the Clouds and taking Big Carp all the way to Lake Superior and back. So I'm glad we went that extra three miles, you know, out of the way. I don't know if the waterfalls were exactly worth it. If you were staying in one of the backcountry campsites or the cabins out there, uh, and then you could only make it a short jaunt, that would probably be much more worth it than our full loop or full trek that we did today. Yeah, and you know, so in typical fashion, I think we originally planned a six mile hike today. Uh, Let's see, we're currently at nine and 9.8. So we got about three miles to go. So I estimated earlier, I'm like, our six mile hike's gonna be 13 miles. We'll see how close I am when we get back. Right. We'll see you at the trailhead. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. <laughs> In case you can't tell from road noise, dogs barking, people. We found we're civilization. We're back out of the woods. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say Pinkerton Creek Trail on the way back seemed tougher to me than on the <laughs> way in. Like we kept talking about it was a little, it was flat. It was easy. The, you know, it's one of those things where remember when you're doing an out and back, you're going to get tired throughout the day. So think about that if you think about adding on miles because the hills will be taller, the roots will be bigger. <laughs> It's just going to be different on the way back. I do think, though, that for us, it was well worth those extra miles today. I mean, it's something we really enjoyed doing. But again, like we've said many times before, 
do what you can do or what you want to do. So go out and back a little bit. Go to Pinkerton Creek itself and, and come back. That's only a, a mile, so it'd be two miles round trip. Go to the mouth of the little carp. That's, you know, three miles in, three miles out. Go to the mouth of the big carp, four miles in, four miles out. Or stop anywhere along the way. There's still just a lot of cool things to see. So, you know, do what works for you because, you know, there's challenges for all abilities out here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it also depends on how fast your pace is, how much you carry. If you look in our videos, you'll see we're carrying pretty big packs full of stuff. We have camera gear. Um, we always pack extra food and water, extra, um, like we have Socks, rain, we rain, have gear. rain gear today because it might rain, that kind of thing. And we know because of the way we hike that our six mile hike that's supposed to take a few hours <laughs> is going to end up being, what do we end up at? Oh, shoot, I have to look. Hold on just a second. It was... I said it was probably going to end up being 13 miles. And, and It wasn't. And all day, because that's just the way we'll hear about something and we'll want to take a little extra jaunt to the side and, and we end up doing that. So our total distance was 12 and a half miles and our time was 7 hours and 21 minutes. Now, that includes, again, a lot of like set the camera down, do a walk by, go figure out and scout a location to shooting. So we walk in circles a lot. And we also took about a 45 minute lunch break. So, you know, that's 45 minutes right there that maybe you're not doing that because you're not stopping. Um, but, you know, we'll stop and actually enjoy the scenery because that's something that that's part of the whole reason that we come out here and do these things. So um, that I think, you know, our time, our distance, it's all going to be relative for us and for you as well. Get out there and do what you can. Um, I guess if you're going to ever hike with us, be really prepared, <laughs> bring extra stuff, <laughs> but know that you're going to enjoy a really good trip, <laughs> whatever you decide to do, keep on trekking and we'll see you out there.